Welcome, Zaslow Show 2.0. It is a Tuesday, the 16th of January. Good to have you aboard, part of the Believe Podcast Network, and presented as always by Anna Jar and Levine, Accident Attorneys, 800 747 free, 800 747 3733. Glad to have you here with us today. Obviously, we're not over the Dolphin loss. There's still a lot to get to there. It's a Tuesday, so we got a fun edition of Twitter Jam for you here. NFL playoffs, we're now going to look forward to the divisional round. Super Wild Card Weekend is over. And by the way, see, I liked that. Now, it was because of unforeseen circumstances with the weather. But doubleheader Saturday, doubleheader Sunday, doubleheader Monday. This is the grift that the NFL pulls, right? Like, Super Wild Card Week just ended. Amazing, amazing Super Wild Card. This weekend fucking sucked. Five of the six games were awful, horrendous games. Texans blow out the Browns. Packers blow out the Cowboys. Chiefs blow out the Dolphins. Bucks blow out the Eagles. You had one close game, and it was Rams and Lions. And yesterday, Bills essentially blow out the Steelers. I mean, that, that game was not close. This was a terrible weekend of football. But this is the trick that the NFL plays on you, right? They're going to have you believe this was amazing. Super wild card weekend. Unbelievable. So the NFL playoffs, they're in full swing. The NBA, they're in full swing. NHL, Bet Online has you covered with all the up to the second odds, news, and scores. With additional odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile, you can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today to get into the action. See all the updated odds. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so we'll get to the NFL. We got Twitter jam, which no spoilers. It might be on the Dolphins. NFL on Fox's Chris Myers is going to be on the show today. So Chris Myers will join us. We'll talk some NFL with him. <coughs> We'll go over Super Wild Card Weekend, and we'll look forward to the divisional rounds. We'll get his thoughts on what happened with the Dolphins also. So we'll talk to Chris Myers coming up. The Heat win last night, but we're going to start with what's most important, and that's am I having an adverse effect on the way the Florida Panthers are playing? So the Panthers have lost back-to-back games now, both bad loss. They'd won nine in a row, so it's not that big a deal. But they lose to at home to New Jersey, and then yesterday, they lose at home to a terrible Anaheim Ducks team. They lose 5-4 in overtime, a 4-2 lead the Panthers had, and they lose 5-4 in overtime. By the way, give it up for our guy Radko Gudis. Radko Gudis got a great ovation, nice little video package. Obviously, iconic moment where Nick Cousins, I believe it was Nick Cousins, who scores the winner in overtime in Game 5 at Toronto in the Eastern Semis. Radko Gudis, yes, he got away with a holding the stick penalty. Screams the goalie, then screams in the goalie's face. Iconic moments right there. I love Radko Gudis. I hate seeing him not playing for the Panthers. I, and I said to my, so I went to the game yesterday. And I said, we sat in our usual seats. First row, goal, upper deck. Love those seats. I'm taking Ninja. You guys know that. You want to know where the great seats are, where the value is? First row, upper deck, behind the goal. Pay 30 bucks. Great value. And I turned to my son at one point. I said, I wouldn't be mad Radko Gudis punched one of our guys in the face. Like, I wouldn't like him. Like, yeah, it's Radko Gudis. You know, I wouldn't even be mad. I love him. I wish he was still playing for us. So, nice to see him back in the building. But the Panthers lose yesterday 5-4. And now... I'm 0-4 at Panther games this year. 0-4. Vancouver, Winnipeg, St. Louis, Anaheim. 0-4. What do I do now? This, this, this is a real problem. Like, I floated the idea after I went to the St. Louis game a couple weeks ago. I floated the idea that maybe I need to take a little bit of a break. Then the Panthers go on a five-game road trip. Well, that's my break. I got to get back in the building and watch my favorite little hockey team. So they lose to New Jersey. It's Martin Luther King Day yesterday. My son wants to go to the game. I want to go to the game. So we go. 0-4 now. 
am I having an adverse effect on the Panthers in Ameren Bank Arena? Do I need to stop going? A at least for a little bit. But he here's, so all in all, I think I do need to stop going. I'm willing to take one for the team. I need to do what's best for everybody. I'm willing to stop going to Panther games for a while. I'm 0-4 at these games. It kills me to think that my presence is, is, hurt, is, is affecting the juju. That I'm hurting my favorite little hockey team here. That kills me at my core. But I think I do have an out. I think I have one out left. Before I have to say, yeah, I can't go anymore. I think I got one out left. I'm 0-4 at games this year. Vancouver, Winnipeg, St. Louis, Anaheim. Four Western Conference teams. I'm gonna, I got one out left. I'm going to go to the next game I go to. It has to be against an Eastern Conference opponent. And that's going to determine if I need to take a long break from going to Panther games this year. If they lose that game, I, I, got, I got to wave the towel. If they win, all right. Now, I still can't go to Western teams, but I can go to Eastern Conference games. I I got one out left, and this is it. Because I love you so much, Panthers. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to be a problem. So th this is the scenario that I find myself. All right. That, that's all there is to it. So the next game I go to, it's going to be an Eastern Conference opponent, and that's going to determine whether or not I can't go anymore this year, or I can only go against Eastern teams. Because I'm not going against Western teams. Until we get to the Stanley Cup Finals again. Then, then I'm back in. So that, that's where I'm at. But disappointing yesterday afternoon. So then we get home. We're watching the football. Let's fast forward a little bit. We got the Heat game. Now, I'm on the air last night. Like I told you guys, I signed a contract. I, I signed a deal with ESPN Radio. So I'm, I'm straight up employed by ESPN now, which is great. Doesn't affect Zaslow Show 2.0. This is always the bread and butter. I'm 305 till I die. I'm always going to be doing Miami no matter what. You know what I'm talking about. But now you're going to be hearing me a lot more on ESPN Radio. And for instance, last night, I co-hosted Game Night with Q Myers uh, from 10 p.m. To, to 1 a.m. I was on right after the homegirl, Amber Wilson, last night. So the Heat game starts at 7.30. So from 7.30 to 10, I'm, I'm watching the Heat game and... Like, I'm dialed in. I, I'm sitting here in my setup at my desk here in the Zaslow Mansion uh, studio, which is in the master bedroom, just a few feet where all the magic happens. And I got the, you know, I, I, I got the Zoom call, the production stuff on my laptop. I got the Comrex right here, which connects me to Bristol. And on my iPad, I got, I got the show map, the rundown. On my phone, I got the heat game. Because on the TV here in the studio... I, I got to have the football on. That's what's most important. I'm working. But the Heat game was so close. So I'm doing the show with Q Myers. I'm keeping my eye there on the Heat. Great finish for the Heat. So miserable. For, Jimmy Butler returns. <laughs> miserable first half. The Heat scored 31 points. 31, 32 points in the first half. Disgusting. Disgusting. That first half was a vomit. But the second half... In the third quarter, the Heat score 37, and then you get a big finish. Tyler Hero in the fourth quarter, back and forth. The, the Heat needed baskets. Hero gets the basket. The Heat go ahead. Then Brooklyn takes the lead. Hero gets the basket. The Heat go back ahead. Then in overtime, the Heat were trailing by five in overtime. Tyler Hero three brings them within one. Tyler Hero three puts them uh, uh, up by one. Tyler was fantastic last night. And you love to see it because I feel like the Heat fan has been a bit critical of Tyler Hero of late. So coming up huge late in the fourth quarter, coming up huge in overtime, love that for him. Jimmy hits two free throws to put the Heat up a point with 11 seconds left. And then you get the defensive stop, Mikel Bridges. He comes up short, actually an air ball. Heat win, 24-16 and 16 on the year now. Season best, eight games over 500. They're back in action tomorrow where... This short little two-game road trip continues in Toronto. And then back home Friday for Udonis Haslam's number 40 going in the Raptors. What a night that's going to be. So, excellent job by the Heat yesterday. 
Terrible job by the Panthers yesterday. NFL. So yesterday afternoon, you get Bills and Steelers, which to me was the one game. Super Bowl Cup, we get sucked. But Bills and Steelers to me was the one game that went exactly how you thought it would. You can't possibly have thought Houston was going to kill Cleveland. Maybe you thought Kansas City was going to kill the Dolphins, whatever. Uh, it, you know, the, the, the Bucks smoking the Eagles like that? Maybe you look at it and say, this is who the Eagles have been for the last seven, eight weeks, so it's not a surprise. But to me, Bucks and Eagles was the hardest game to figure out going into the weekend. But Steelers, Bills played out exactly the way that I felt it would. I think the Bills got, got, got essentially a stay of execution after winning the, the division over the Dolphins. I think they're getting a second chance here, and I think they have a great matchup at home against Kansas City. I think we're going to see, these are two teams that aren't very good, Buffalo and Kansas City. And I think that's going to wind up bearing itself out in the AFC Championship game, whichever one of those teams move on, and be it playing at Baltimore or hosting Houston. I think Baltimore and Houston are both better than Buffalo and Kansas City right now. <clears throat> I don't think those are two very good teams. Game's got a ton of juice to it, but... Buffalo, they were up two, up 21 nothing at one point. They were up two scores the whole game. The Steelers were never really a threat. That game went exactly the way you thought it would. And then Monday Night Football, Bucks and Eagles, holy shit. Like, how many teams in the NFL right now do you think the Eagles could beat? You know, I was saying on game night last night, Steelers, they're, they're the weakest. I, I want to say worst. They're the weakest team in the postseason. No, I, I'm, I was dead wrong. The Eagles are by far the worst team in the playoffs. We're the worst team in the playoffs. I don't know how many teams in the National Football League the Eagles can beat right now. That's one of the worst teams in the NFL. And they were 10-1. and one. How do you explain that? And now the conversation is going to become about Sirianni and Belichick. It's not just Mike McCarthy, who I'm surprised has not been fired yet. But is Siri I, I don't think Sirianni is going to get fired. But that's a conversation now, right? I thought the Eagles had... W the Buccaneers go out in front 13-0. I thought the Eagles had had one chance where late in the first half, they put together back-to-back -back drives, field goal touchdown. They did give up a field goal to Tampa Bay in between. And then the clock runs out on them at the end of the first half. It's 16-9. But they do get the ball back to start the third quarter. If the Eagles came out at the start of that third quarter, got a touchdown to tie the game, like, okay. But if they don't start the third quarter and get a touchdown, this game's over. You can't possibly like what you've seen from the Eagles. Guess what? They went three and out. Then you get the safety. Awful job by Hurts there. And away we go. The Buccaneers smoke them. 32-9. to nine. Tampa Bay now moves on to Detroit. And this is a, it was a disaster of a season for Philly. This is a home run of a season for Tampa, but it ends next week. Because I'm watching that game yesterday, and while Tampa won 32-9, scored 32 points, a Bucs team that only scored 9 last week against the Panthers. Not the Florida Panthers, the Carolina Panthers. I'm watching that game yesterday, and while the Bucs win 32-9, I, I can't help but feel the Lions would have won yesterday against the Eagles by 100. And... We talk about expectations changing on this show, right? Where, and that happened throughout the season with the Dolphins. Expectations change. <clears throat> the Detroit Lions, if you go into the season and say, you're going to win the division, you're going to host a playoff game, you're going to win that game, is the season a huge success? A resounding yes. But expectations change now. Now, because of Dallas losing... Things are lining up beautifully for the Lions. The Lions have a major opportunity in front of them where they just have to win a home game against a nine-win Tampa Bay Bucks team, and they're in the NFC Championship game. Now, what felt like a home run of a season for Detroit, and it still is, will be extremely disappointing if they don't now take advantage of and beat the Buccaneers at home to get to one win away from the Super Bowl. Expectations change.
That's where you are now with the Detroit Lions. And they're obviously hoping for a Green Bay win because then they would host Green Bay in the NFC Championship game. So this is what next week looks like. <coughs> Saturday, Houston at Baltimore. I think it's going to be a great game. Kansas City at Buffalo. Uh, can, uh, excuse me. Kansas City at Buffalo is on Sunday. So Houston at Baltimore. I think that's going to be a great game. Green Bay at San Francisco is also on Saturday. I, you can't help but think San Francisco is going to win. Sunday, Kansas City at Buffalo. I think it's going to be a great game. I expect Buffalo to win. Tampa Bay at Detroit. Next Sunday, finishing out your divisional round. I think Detroit's really going to put it on them. So that's what we're looking at now as far as the divisional round is concerned. Today is Tuesday. Let's get to Twitter Jam. So, this week's edition of Twitter Jam, just like it is most weeks here during football season, it's on the Miami Dolphins. That's right. So let's go on out to the most important tweets of the last couple days, reacting to what's going on with the Dolphins. First up, this is David Fioronis. He covers the Miami Dolphins for the Sun Sentinel. And he says, Tyree Kill consoles Dolphins fans, advising them not to give up on Mike McDaniel to a tongue of Iloa. And he attached this clip which is Tyreek doing like a, a live stream while he's playing video games. I know that the season didn't end the way we wanted it to end, man. But a lot of people, especially in Fan Nation, there are some great things to look forward to coming into the year, man. Coach McDaniel, he coaches his ass off. Still a young coach, still improving each, each and every year. And, you know, it's only been two years. And look how far we made it. Like last year, we was number six offense. This year, we're number one offense. And it's going to continue to get better. Like, these things just don't happen out of nowhere. I, I, I get it. Like, every organization is different. So, a lot of people are so quick to give up on, you know, what the Dolphins are trying to build right now. And it's for the future, man. And they got a great coach, Coach McDaniel. So, don't give up, man. Don't give up on tour. Don't give up on coach. Don't give up on just everybody, man, in the whole entire building. Cause I see a lot of people, they're like, oh, you need to draft this person. You need to get rid of this person. It's like, bro, like, it's only been two years. Uh, I mean, Tyreek, listen, he's he's gotten over the loss pretty quick. He's out there playing the video games. I guess if you're a Dolphin fan, you'll like he's going right out there and sticking up for his guys. Tyreek doesn't seem too broken up. All right, is what it is. Next week, this is from the Dan Lebitard Show with Stu Gotts. Great podcast. Good program. And it says, quote, <coughs> Dwayne, what, this is the stat of the day. Dwayne Wade has started and finished college, started and finished a Hall of Fame career, and gotten a statue since the last time the Dolphins won a playoff game. Yeah, that's very upsetting. That's true. Very depressing. This tweet is from Josh Moser. He, he is a sportscaster. I believe he hosts on WSBN7. And he says here, Javon Holland at Dolphins Cleanout. Quote, we're going to need people to be back if we want to be successful. That's priority number one. And he attached this clip from Javon Holland. Frustrating situation because, I mean, you want to win, but we're just not winning in the playoffs. We're just not doing it, especially in 20, was it 24 years? I mean, obviously, we're going to need people back uh, in order to continue to be successful. Um, you know, continuity, bringing from one first year of the defense to the second year of the defense, of course. Um, but yeah, when you get our guys back, I mean, that's kind of priority number one. But I mean, if we don't have our guys, then kind of got to restart. You know what I mean? This next tweet here is from Pro Football Network. Pro Football Network, they, they cover, they cover the, the NFL. And it says here, Tyreek Hill has a message for Dolphin fans after their early playoff exit. Quote, fuck everybody else. It still fins up. All right. There you go. This next tweet is from... Orlando Alzagari, Big O. Big O's a good dude. He has been super critical of Mike McDaniel. Really, most of this season. And here he tweets out, Some Dolphins fans get all bent out of shape when I say Mike McDaniel's teams are undisciplined. Well, here's former NFL player Chris Long on Rich Eisen. Hate to say it, 24 is McDaniel's make or break year. This fan base will completely turn on him if it continues. And here's Chris Long. I like Mike McDaniel, but like, you know, the disciplinary stuff, the third downs, there were like four or five third downs in this game where if you got third manageable in that weather, the way they are, you feel good. Uh, but 
they false started, they had illegal formations, they had a bunch of stuff that knocked them back. Yeah, uh, like I said, uh, Big O has been extremely critical of Mike McDaniel. I think a little bit too much, but at the same time, you could be critical of the head coach and also believe that he's going to continue to improve, just like players can continue to improve. I That's always a weird thing for me. It's like, all right, you know, Mike McDaniel, terrible job. He's the right guy. Why can't he's only been head coach for two years? He's actually only been a play caller for two years too. Why can't he also continue to improve? The Dolphins have been a miserable franchise for a quarter century. This last season's ending was super fucking bitter. But these cumulatively, these last two seasons have been so much better than everything we've seen combined for this entire century so far. This next tweet is from Awful Announcing. They tweet out, The ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown crew had a pretty nuanced discussion about Tua Tonga Bailoa, his 23 season, and his future with the Miami Dolphins. Here's the clip. Well, I, I tell you what, my, my biggest concern with Tua was not the concussion things, which clearly is a concern. It was the hip injury when he came out of college. And how is that hip injury? And here's why I think it, there's something to this. The man rushed for six first downs this year. That's it. It's the extending plays. We've seen it. That's That's got to be a concern, right? I mean, when he throws on rhythm, this dude is about as accurate as it gets, and it's tremendous. But it's the other thing. I think that's got to clear before they give – this guy an extension, that kind of extension, I think they gotta, they got to worry about that initial injury because, quite honestly, there were some people in NFL circles who didn't think he would play for a second contract. That has to be cleared up before he ever gets a big extension. I, I, I can't help but to think, though, I, I hear you, Rex. I feel like some of the, the, the lack of running was almost mental this year. Like he took so many hits last year. It was such a big thing for him to come back and stay healthy that I really fought, saw it like a hesitancy to run. And listen, I know he's not Lamar, but like, I think he's gifted enough to occasionally beat you. And we saw he got two first downs last night. I think as he gets more comfortable playing again, this is really his first full year playing, a full season of football. He led the NFL in passing. I mean, right. he did some great things. He's got some characteristics, some anticipation you just can't, you can't coach. And so there are some unique qualities there. Yeah, the, 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 Dolphins, are in a, the Dolphins are in a situation with Tua, which I, I, I don't envy Chris Greer in the conversations he has to have with the quarterback and with the agent. But my general thought there is, why can't Tua play the fifth year of his contract? Certainly there's no reason for Tua to get some exorbitant contract. But... Why can't Tua play the fifth year of his contract? Signed a five-year deal. Signed a four-year deal. We'll, we'll, we'll get more into that. But I do, think, I do think it's interesting what Rex Ryan is saying there, what Alex Smith is saying there, about maybe that it is in Tua's head a little bit about getting hit when it comes to running for first downs. He had six first downs that he picked up by foot this year. You should be getting one a game as a quarterback. Six is one every three games. It's not good enough. He's got to be able to make plays like that. And maybe that's the next thing. He came back into this season, bulked up, and showing that he can learn how to, to land property, to, to withstand hits, and stay healthy. What's the next thing that Tua is going to come back with showing that he has improved? Maybe, that, maybe this is that. So this next tweet here, this is from Kurt Warner, NFL Network, former quarterback, Hall of Fame quarterback. And he tweets out, Tua anticipates better than anyone and is extremely accurate with the football. Throws an extremely catchable ball and gets it out very quickly. Few people in the league would thrive doing what they asked Tua to do in Miami. And he also says, just sitting here frustrating watching the Dolphins offensive tape back. First, tip my hat to Kansas City and Spags. Miami had no chance. But on the other side, no pressure plan. Confusing concepts. Still struggling when having to work behind number one read. Tua playing too fast. Yeah, that, that's, that's very critical of Mike McDaniel there. This next tweet is from Daniel Jeremiah. He hosts the podcast, popular podcast, Moving the Sticks, NFL Network. He's also on Chargers Radio. Here's Daniel, My Daniel Jeremiah tweets out, My thoughts on the Dolphins and Tua's future. Here's the clip. 
Can I change gears here? Let me get to Miami. And I want to just kind of ease the concerns and the panic and -hmm. the hysteria for the Miami Dolphin fans here. Okay. I'm going to do it by giving you two different sets of numbers here. You ready? Mm -hmm. Three and five. Okay. Remember that three wins, five losses. Now let's look at two wins, five losses. Okay. Want me to tell you what that is? That is Peyton Manning's road playoff record, and that is Drew Brees' road playoff record. Now, I'm not saying they need home games. Tua, I'm not saying Tua is Peyton or he is Drew Brees. I'm saying those teams were specifically built on precision passing, which requires them to play home playoff games to be successful. Yes. The regular <laughs> season matters more to precision passing yes. teams than it does to anyone else. Two is a precision passer. He is not a play in minus 30 degree weather yes. quarterback. Okay. Yeah. That's, That's okay. okay. That's yeah. okay. That doesn't mean that you can't win a Super Bowl with Tua. You can win a Super Bowl with Tua, but you better freaking take care of business in the regular season and play at and home. Finally got one more for you here. Uh known dolphin slash Tua supporter, FS1's speak, uh Emmanuel Acho. He tweets out, as a Dolphins fan, I'm not mad at them for losing this game. I'm not mad at Tua for losing this game. I'm mad at them for not winning the division because had they, they wouldn't be in this position. They would have played at home and won a playoff game. That's essentially what Daniel Jeremiah is saying there as well. There's a lot of truth to that, obviously. I said to my son yesterday, we, we were there when the Dolphins season ended. We went to Monday Night Football and watched their season end when they blew that game to the Tennessee Titans. And that right there is another edition of Twitter Champ. All right, guys. If you're thinking about getting a new car, the only car dealership I'm going to send you to is the official car dealership of Zaslow Show 2.0. You know I'm talking about North Fort Lauderdale Subaru. Come on now. At North Fort Lauderdale Subaru, you're going to be treated like royalty. You walk through the showroom doors there. You got a relaxed indoor car shopping experience. Whatever you're looking for, North Fort Lauderdale Subaru is going to have the perfect car for you. SUV, truck, in stock, ready for you to roll. Hey, maybe you're looking for a a used car. Well, North Fort Lauderdale Subaru has all kinds of used cars, trucks, SUVs of every make and model. You're sure to find your next vehicle at North Fort Lauderdale Subaru. Maybe you just want to get your current vehicle serviced. Luckily for you at North Fort Lauderdale Subaru, Subaru, you can service with confidence because they service all makes and models. That's right. Now, right now at North Fort Lauderdale Subaru, all kinds of amazing offers going on. You can make zero down payment, make zero payments for three months, make zero security deposit. Hey, what if I told you you can lease the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Premium for just $219 a month for 36 months with $44.95 due at signing with approved credit. Go to nflsubaru.com. That's nflsubaru.com for full details. North Fort Lauderdale Subaru, the location you know with an experience you'll love.